in the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Amen. Amen. Do you all hear what it says? To them that love Him. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That only applies to them that love Him. Amen. And them who are calling according to His purpose. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know that we have been called according to the purpose, for God's purpose. Amen. Amen. We have been called according to His purpose and His plan for our life. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why we are here tonight again. Amen. To get in into the Word. Amen. To get into the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just to get into God's Word. Only God's Word can do it. Nothing else can do it but the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Nothing else can do it. Amen. So, tonight, we'll be continuing uh, fasting and praying. Amen. Our subject tonight is on fasting and praying. Amen. When we, I'm going to that's going to bring the five points of uh, why why should we fast and pray? Why should you fast and pray? And not not only just pray, but we must fast and pray. Amen. We don't we don't like fasting. We don't mind praying. They have a problem with fasting. But let, let us open up by him. Let's see what Jesus said about fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Because many people say, well, fasting is not for this time. It was for them time is a But I come to you this night that fasting, it never changed. The word of God never changed. The word of God is seen yesterday, today, and forever. Where it was in the Old Testament, fasting was in the Old Testament, and fasting is still in the New Testament. Amen? Because God was the God of the Old Testament, and it's the God of the New Testament. They fast in the Old Testament, and they fast in the New Testament. And many of, many believers do fast they don't fast at all. They don't fast. Now you notice I didn't say they didn't pray. They don't pray. Because most of them pray, but they don't fast. Amen. Amen. Most believers pray, but they don't fast. And it is so good to fast and pray. You bring fast and pray together. But not only do we want to fast and pray, but we want to do it right. Some boys say right. Right. The right way, amen? Right way. You don't want to do something that is the wrong way because someone tell you just fast, but they didn't teach you what is fast, they didn't teach you what is prayer. So yes, what Jesus, what Jesus have to say about praying and fasting. Hallelujah. What Jesus of the same with pray and fasting. Let's go to Matthew 6 and verse 5 and 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5 and 6. Matthew 6, verse 5 and 6. You, you have it. You want to say that? <laughs> so wait. I ain't got it yet. <coughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 6, rather, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Go ahead, Leon. And when thou prayest, 
You hear that? He says, when thou prays, when you pray. So that means if you are the disciple of Jesus Christ, you must pray. He says, when you pray, who's, who's, who's speaking? Jesus. Who's speaking? Jesus. So Jesus says, when you pray, that means when that means we are to we are to pray. We are to pray. The when is the indication that this is something that we must do. We must pray as a believer. We must pray. But watch how he's gonna teach us the right way. Because there's a wrong way of praying and there's a right way of praying. I say there's a wrong way of praying and there's a right way of praying. Do you believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. There's a right way of praying, there's a wrong way of praying. Amen. When we pray the wrong way, we don't get no result. So we stop praying. Amen. And anytime you pray the wrong way, you'll get no results. So you get frustrated. And frustration leads to anger. And anger say, well, I'm not going to pray no more. Yeah. <laughs> and many people, because they pray yeah. the wrong way, get no result. Amen. They get frustrated and then they stop praying. Amen. But if, it, if they was taught the right way, they will get result. Amen. Hallelujah. If they are taught the right way, they will get result. So when we are taught the right way of prayer, we get result. Amen. See, we talk about prayer now that we can talk about fasting. And then we can bring it together. Amen. Amen. We can explain prayer, then explain fasting, then bring it together. Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. <clears throat> Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites. You hear that? <laughs> Thou shalt not be like the what? The hypocrites. Hallelujah. You see? Yes, see, how they okay. He said you must not be like that. So there's a way that the hypocrite they they operate. And now Jesus is gonna tell us. Read. Thou shalt not be like the hypocrites. Uh-huh. But they love to pray standing in the synagogues. You see, the hypocrites like to pray standing in the synagogue, in the church, but they don't have a prayer life home. Amen. They will pray before the congregation, but they don't have a prayer life home. You know what I'm saying? Amen. They'll pray before the congregation, but when they go home, silence, no prayer. But before the people, they will pray. Amen. <laughs> Watch what Jesus said. And in the corners of the street, they want to be seen. Yes. They want to be seen. See, that's that's the mock, that's the wrong word. Amen. So automatically, you're not gonna get no young reward. Is the people who see you. Amen. I say young reward is those people who are around you who who sees you. Amen. They young reward. Really? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you. Surely I say unto you. Reward. So, so when you pray the right way, there's a reward. Amen. Once you pray the right way, there's a what? Reward. Amen. When you pray even the wrong way, you get reward. Amen. But you, you're not gonna like it. Jesus says they have their reward. reward. Amen. Why? Go ahead. But thou will not. Now Jesus is talking to the church. He says, Thou, when you prayed, when you pray, when, when you pray, number one, read, enter into thy closet. Enter into your closet. Number one, enter into your closet. Isolate. The closet, he's not meaning a closet that you hang your clothes. He's not meaning Amen. That. Amen. Most people say, well, I have, their, I, I have a prayer closet that I go into. No, Jesus is not talking about the closet Amen. that we hang clothes. Amen. Hallelujah. Because in Jesus' days, there was no closet. Okay. Amen. That's true, Pastor. Hallelujah. In Jesus' days, there was no closet. So he's not talking about the closet that we know. <laughs> what he's talking about, that we go into an isolated place where we shut everything out. Hallelujah, where we shut the world out. And everything that distracting you, you shut it out. And you close the door. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You shut everything out. Amen. And you isolate yourself from everything. Everything. Amen. Everything. Amen. And you close the door in your mind. Amen. The door in your mind. Because sometimes when you pray, there's things that the enemy will bring to distract you while you pray. Amen. That's true. So he says, when thou prayed, thou must enter into your closet and close the door. Enter into your closet and close the door. Say, so we go into the closet and we close the door. We, we, we shut the door. Amen. Amen. Did you, last week I talked about um, real prayer is, is where you isolate yourself from the world. From the things that are in the world where you are not no longer moved by the things that are going on in this world. Amen. Where you are free from the things that, that, is, that is taking place in this world. Amen. Amen. Uh, real prayer is heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. This is a prayer that the prophet Elijah prayed. Heartfelt prayer is prayer that comes directly from the spirit. Amen. Where you pray out of your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Heartfelt prayer. So Jesus said again, when you pray, this is the way I want you to do it. Amen. The right way. There's a right way of praying and there's a wrong way of praying. Many people spend uh, many hours praying the wrong way and get no result. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you pray the right way, you get reward. You get a result. You see the difference because you're praying the right way. Now, what Jesus, what is the right way? And when thou hast shut the door. When you are shut the door, it means to, to lock everything out. Amen. It means to lock everything out that has that has taken place on the outside. All of the thoughts and everything that is trying to distract you, you have to lock it out. Amen. You have to lock it out. Because Amen. Uh, any times when you when you when you try, when you decided to pray the right way, uh, the enemy will always try to distract you by by bringing a thought in your mind so you will be drifted away by a thought. Amen. Hallelujah. But he says that when you pray, you go in the closet and close the door. Close the door. Sins of God, he's not talking about closing a physical door. He's not talking about closing the closet door. Amen. He's talking about closing the door that will lead to your heart. Amen. Don't allow no distraction to come in. So when you close it, the, the, the distraction can come in. You're praying, but you are focused. You, you, you are focused on God and who you're praying to. Your mind ought to be on, 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 on God and not on which, which is going on around you. Go ahead. Pray to the Father which is in secret. Pray to your Father which is in secret. secret. Go ahead. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Hallelujah. So this is why David says in Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place. So the secret place is prayer. The secret place is the place of prayer. The secret place is the place of what? Prayer. prayer. Hallelujah. The secret place is the place of prayer. And he says, Your father, who what? Your father who what? Who sees you 
in secret place. He will reward you openly. So folks are going to know that you've been praying because they're going to see the reward. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. I say, you're not proof to no one you've been praying. They're going to see it. Hallelujah. They're going to see the reward of prayer. Hallelujah. Because if we do it right, we will get, we'll get reward. We will get, we'll start seeing the benefit of prayer. And we are learning how to love prayer. Amen. I said we are learning to love prayer. Because most believers don't love prayer because they've been praying and they've been missing. Because they're doing it the wrong way. Prayer is not religious. I want you to write this down. Prayer is not religious. But prayer is spiritual. Amen. It's a different. Prayer is not religious. Prayer is spiritual. Amen. It is spiritual. Amen. Amen. It is spiritual. So he says that in the secret place of Father, that secret place will reward you openly. Now, listen, he says that when you pray, when you pray, that means that we ought to pray. Right or wrong? Right. That means if you are a, a, a child of the true living God, you ought to pray. Do you know every religion pray? Every religion pray. But they don't pray to the God that we pray to. No. But they pray. But they pray. And some of them pray more than Christian pray. And that's a shame. Yeah. And they are praying to a false God, but they are dedicated. They are submitted to pray. But Christians, sometimes we only pray when we find ourselves in trouble. You got to say amen. 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 That's true, Pastor. It's when trouble. When trouble is knocking, that's the time we're going to go on our face and start praying. And if the trouble gets too serious, we're going to act fast and wait. I say, if it gets too serious, because Christians don't like fast. Every, every religion pray and every religion fast. Amen. But Christians don't like to pray, Christians don't like to fast, but yet we want result. <laughs> we don't want to fast, we want to pray, and yet we want everything to work together to come to God, divine counsel for our life. Amen. Hallelujah. What, what, what most Christians call praying is that fighting and competing with one another. This who can pray the longest, who can pray the loudest, who can spy, who can really sound more intelligent. That ain't prayer. Your boasted, your, your, your capability, that's not prayer. Every prayer must be based on the will of God. Right or wrong? Right. Every prayer must be based on God's will. And if that prayer is not grounded by the word of God, it's not prayer. So what you're doing? Sometimes we debate, sometimes we beg, sometimes we cry. Sometimes we even debate with God, argue with God. So the foundation of prayer must be the word of God. The foundation of Christian prayer must be the word of God. Hallelujah. The foundation of what? Prayer must be what? The word of the living God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that it's the word of God. David says in Psalms 19, 119, he says, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. So if the word of God has been settled in heaven forever, it means that God can never change his mind concerning his promises. See, this is why my prayer must be based on what, what God said. Hallelujah. Not what you think, what you see. Your prayer must be based on what God say. Amen. Because God is only faithful 
to his word. Amen. Hallelujah. He says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word shall abide forever. Heaven and earth will cease from existing, but his word will abide forever. David says in Psalms 138 and verse 2, he says, God magnify his words above his name. Hallelujah. God will magnify his words above his name. So now, prayer must be based on God's word, based on the will of God. Amen. Prayer must be based on the will of God. Not my will, but thou will be done. Where I'm lying in, where I'm coming in agreement with the will of God or the, or the word of God what has been settled in heaven forever. We must come in agreement with that, with that word. Now let's go to uh, verse 16 and 17. Uh, March, March, March 6, verse 16 and 17. Now that's prayer. Let's talk a little. Now Jesus is going to tell us about fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The best teacher is who? Jesus. Amen. I said the best teacher is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's going to tell us about fasting and praying. Go ahead, read verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, that means that you want fast. He says, when ye fast. It's an indication that you will fast. You must fast. He says, when you fast. When you fast. Not when you go on diet. It's a difference between fasting and dieting. That's the name. What's the name? It's a difference between fasting and dieting. Amen. Say, so I, I go on diet to lose weight. Amen. I fast to get close to God. Amen. Oh, to keep my flesh on the subject. Go ahead. Be not as the hypocrites. Be not as the what? Hypocrites. So even them fast. Amen. That's true, Pastor. I say, even them fast. Even those who are not right with God, they still fast. Amen. And let me tell you something. It's a shame to say they fast more than us who say we're right with God. <laughs> even though they're fasting the wrong way, they're fasting for, for they, 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 they have the wrong motive, a wrong agenda in, in doing their fast, but they're still fasting. Go ahead. So they want you to know they fast, so they, they just make up their face. Yes. So when you look at them, yes. you say, oh, you've been fasting, you're fasting. Yes, fasting. <laughs> How many people that, amen, there's a lot of people that, that want people to know they're fasting. Or I, I, mean, I just came on a 10 days fast, nobody asked you that. And I'm going on a 21 days fast, nobody asked you that. See, you are boasting. Nobody asks you that. Your fasting is supposed to be secret. Amen. Amen. I say your fasting unto God is supposed to be secret. You're, Amen. Supposed to, you're not supposed to tell everybody that hey, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Hey, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Hey, I'm fasting. I don't get me mad. Hey, I'm fasting. That's your fasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's the wrong way of fasting. That's the wrong type of fasting. Amen. And saint, uh, saints of God, uh, and I, I want you to, I want you to understand this: that what in power the believer, what in power the believer, what God used to empower the, the believer, fasting. Remember, we must fast, but we must pray. But uh, fast and praying in power the believer. Okay, let's go into scripture. Let's go to scripture. Let's see what 
the power to believe. Number one, let's go to Acts 10 38. We can go to two scriptures. The Bible says we have two or three witnesses, and everything be what? Established. Amen? Amen. So we're going to go to two. Two scriptures. Acts 10 was 38, and it read. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Listen. With the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And with power. Oh. So, so the anointing, how God anointed Jesus of Lazarus with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the anointing. It is the Holy Ghost that produced the power. Hallelujah. It is the Holy Ghost that produced the power in the believer life. Right or wrong? Right. It's the Holy Ghost that produced the power of the believe life. Now, I'm not saying that we must not fast and pray. Yes, fast and pray help release that power that is in you. Amen. Fasting and praying release that power that is in you. Do y'all believe me? Amen. Do y'all believe the word? Amen. How Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who was oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to another one. Let's go to another one. Amen. Because most people most believer, and let me see how we should say that, and I'm not hitting no one, but I'm just saying it. Most believer think that in order for them to be anointed or powerful, they must live fast and pray. And, and again, I'm saying we must fast and pray. But, but fasting don't give you power. Amen. Fasting don't give you power. Yes, he will give you power. Yes, sir. Acts 1, 8. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts 1 and verse 8. I'm not saying that we must not fast and pray. Because there is a need for fast and pray. If Jesus fasts and pray, we must fast and pray. But we don't fast. For more power. I'm going to show you in the next to the word why we fast and why we pray. Why you must fast and why you must pray. Now, what it says. But ye shall receive power. What? Ye shall receive power. Where? So if there's no Holy Ghost in you, there's no power in you, and it doesn't matter how much time you fast. Amen. That's true. And pray. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The power is is comes in with by the Holy Ghost. Once you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive the power of God. Hallelujah. Let me, let me tell you something. The, the, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, and, and get this, write this down. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ that dwelling in the heart of the believer. Amen. To empower them to carry out and fulfill the work of God. The Holy Ghost is the power of God that dwells in the heart of the believer, that empower them, amen, that enable them to fulfill the work that God has assigned them to do. Amen. So he says that after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. power. After the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. Power. Now, 
So if power, so it, it is not by you fasting and praying. Because saints of God, and, and, and I'm going to call no name of no religion, but I don't have to. The Muslim fast more than many Christians. Amen. Do you see any signs and wonders coming out of the power? Yet they fast, but they are not, they're not in the truth. But yet they fast, they fast a lot. And they are submitted and dedicated. But they don't release no power. Because fasting don't give you no power. The Holy Ghost is what give you the power. Hallelujah. Now, nah, nah. I want you to understand there is still a need for fasting because Jesus said, when you pray and when you fast, so we can agree. That means that the indication is that I will pray, I must pray, and I must fast. So what is the purpose of fasting and praying? See, sometimes we think that if I fast for 40 days, I'm going to come out and signs and wonders and be working with me. No, not if I don't understand. If you don't understand it, it ain't nothing happen. You just will open up your spirit for more spirits. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because when you fast and when you pray, you open it up, you open it, reopen up your spirit. And if you're not in the truth, you will be you will be influenced by lies. And you will think those lies, and you will take those lies like those lies is the truth. When there's lies. So the Holy Ghost, Amen. When you see receive the power, Amen. After the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive power to do what? To do what? To be a witness, to be a witness. So power to witness. Power to witness. Power. Hallelujah. Now, please, I want you to understand what I'm saying tonight. I'm not saying that we must not fast and pray. Yes, every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ must fast and pray. According to the Bible, must fast and pray. But we must understand, we must understand that fasting, fasting don't make you Yes, he will fast in us. Yes, go to first second Corinthians. Oh, first Corinthians. 